Welcome to Hawley in the heart of the Surrey countryside. Although just over there is the M23 and we're right next door to Gatwick Airport. Behind me is the new HQ of the Greyhound Trust. It might not look much now, but there are plans in place for a new office and a fantastic new flagship centre. Well, Wings is, um, uh, yes, our new home. We're fortunate that there was a building on site that we could um, make use of, put the staff in. And I think that's important because it means the staff's on site and they can see it all happen. Um, it's taken a little while to negotiate and get planning permission, but here we are. I remember standing with you when you interviewed me um, very early on and I said if you can dream it you can do it and this is the dream and we're going to do it which is just amazing. So what you see um, behind you is the field where we're going to be building. So there's going to be a small head office, 30 kennels, so we'll be able to have 60 dogs on site. The most important thing about what we're doing here is really focusing on transitioning the dogs transitioning the dogs from racing kennels into a home. How are you going to be doing that? So the kennels have been specifically designed with transitioning in mind. Um, so we've got meet and greet rooms that are going to be set up like normal kind of front, front rooms with sofas, rugs, TVs, etc, etc. Doorbells to get dogs used to all the things that are going to happen in a, in a home. And we're going to have some lovely real life rooms where the dogs can go and socialise, where people can come to come to site and, and really help these dogs experience what it's going to be like in a, in a home rather than a, a racing kennel. Of course, so much of this depends on money. Uh, what's the situation in terms of how much you've got, how ready you are to start building and, and you know, I guess what you're saving by, by not renting offices in uh, another expensive area? Yeah, so we bought the property out of our reserves. We could borrow money to, to build the offices and the, the kennels and we could do that. But what we hope is that the GVGB will be able to give us the, the money to build the offices and then we'll try and raise the money to build the kennels and the and the facilities that go with them um, from from the industry and other greyhound supporters and we'll acknowledge everybody because we would really like the whole greyhound community and indeed beyond that to feel that they're involved in this because it's a very exciting project so this is the, the new site. Um, this is Wings, um, which is the bungalow actually that the Greyhound Trust head office have moved into as our temporary offices, whilst we build in this side of the, the site. So a small head office building here, and most importantly, the, the new kennel block here. Um, nice balancing pond, beautiful landscaping, woodland walks, lovely turnout paddocks further up the site. Um, some being kind of real focused on off lead, some being much more focused on interactive play um, with a whole walk around the, the edge of the site. So there'll be plenty of places for the dogs to get out and about. And then this is the actual kennel block. Absolutely. So horseshoe shape. Horseshoe shape, um, two, two blocks. This side can't see this side. They look out onto the courtyard. This this section um, look out onto the balancing pond and this end is really important for what we're going to be doing here which is the transitioning of these dogs from race dogs to, to family pets so a real focus on real life rooms meet and greet rooms etc etc so th this end is very much focused on these dogs getting into a, a family home and then that's not very nice for the dogs basically because they're heated as well aren't they but Absolutely. what about for you guys is so, it going to be nice Modest, <laughs> modest, just enough room for us to do, do the job we, we need to and focus on supporting our, our branches. Well, this is Liz and she is the Welfare and Operations Manager here at the Greyhound Trust. A relative newbie, but uh, not new to Greyhounds, are you? No, not at all. I met my husband uh, many moons ago now in, through Greyhound Racing. He, was, he worked for Brian Clemenson when he was training. Um, and I had my own uh, bitch when she was running with Derek Knight. And I previously ran um, the Brighton uh, Greyhound Owners Association Trust for retired dogs, homing them. Um, and I've been at the RSPCA and I've gone full circle and come back to Greyhounds because I'm so passionate about them. And I can understand why. <laughs> and from a welfare point of view, this centre must be a dream for you because the dogs that come here, uh, they're every whim is going to be catered for, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. This gives us the opportunity to um, think about these dogs transitioning from a racing environment or previously being in a branch environment to getting out into a, a domestic home which we know for some dogs can be a real challenge most dogs make the transition really easily but this centre gives us the opportunity to give them the best start of getting into a home and talking of facilities we've got a demonstration here on the ground for the viewers you're going to talk us through a bit more about the kennels yeah sure so what we've got in the blue here is the standard uh, Greyhound Board of Great Britain sizing. So this area here would be the bed and this area here would be the floor space. Now we know there's nothing wrong with these sizing um, but when we're looking at creating uh, I guess the 
a, a centre of excellence for greyhounds, we need to look at providing the, the biggest space possible to allow us the most flexibility to rehabilitate greyhounds that may have some issues. So this white area here um, that with that comes up to here is actually the, the entire floor space of each of our kennels. Um, this allows us to have um, beds that may be movable. We haven't quite decided on that, but this is the optimum amount of space for um, the floor and you know two greyhound sharing that maybe there's some resource guarding issues. Um, knowing that we can have beds in separate places is a really big bonus to try and stop them bed guarding. Um, there'll be a hatch, uh, which will be a good size. So again, there's not one dog uh, stopping another dog getting out into the run area. And this area over here is the run, which will be a covered run to the outside. Why is this a good location? So this is a great location. It's in the southeast. It's going to be fabulous for awareness and increasing homings. It's a good location for fundraising. And most importantly, this site is ideal for, for having dogs on it. So we've got a little bit of road noise, a little bit of background noise for, from the M23. We've got prevailing wind, um, which is westerly, um, and we're on the Gatwick flight path, but actually it's not very noisy. Um, and the reality is that dogs do make some level of, of, of noise. Um, and therefore, because of the prevailing wind and the setup of the road and the, the, the airport it means that we can face the dogs acoustically well on this site and have uh, and minimize the, the impact that we have on on the surrounding community. We don't have the financial resources that some of the bigger organizations do have and I still believe very passionately that the number one way we sell these dogs is we get them with their volunteers with their owners and we get them out into the community and meeting people and that's where we start to break down the myths and misunderstandings that we know still put people off homing greyhounds and we'll steer them to other breeds instead. I think what this gives us is a is the best possible platform to do that. You know, I'm very passionate about the work that's done by all of our branches and, and the simple fact that the charity can't continue its homing, can't continue its awareness work unless we all work together. Uh, what it does give us here is the platform that we've needed for ages to really build on what we do currently. So yeah, it's, a, it's part of a bigger piece of work for the whole charity, that's for sure. You are notoriously a charity that has to run on a minimal amount of money and home an exceptionally large number of dogs off the back of that. And this is of course costing a lot of money. How beneficial is it, do you think, for your vision, which is to one day home every retired racing greyhound? It's absolutely key and I'm standing here hand on heart and I believe that our founding members would be absolutely proud of, of what we're doing. We were set up to home retired racing greyhounds and this will give us the stability for moving forward for the future to ensure that we can continue to do that and that we can be as effective as we possibly can be. So this is your dream. When am I going to be back seeing the first dog walk to, walk into the kennels? <laughs> well, you've, you've spoken to Steve and he's got, his, his aspirations are a little less than, than, than mine. He's, he's, he's estimating 18 months. I'm saying if you come back here by the end of next summer, I hope that we'll be a long way to, to opening.